Hello everybody, this is Bud Rich from Bud Labs and today I want to present BWP which is the latest script here added to the Bud Labs organization on GitHub github.com slash budlabs you can find this BWP repository now which contains uh, the finished version of, of the um, script uh, or tool we have been working on uh, in the last couple of videos here uh, that selects wallpapers. Here is a very visual representation of, of a use case for this script is you can add a polybar module and change wallpaper from here. Uh, this example with the polybar module, you can find that in the repository in the examples directory. You can find this polybar directory here, which have uh, uh, that script and instructions on how to get that. Um, there are other uh, things as well. You can add uh, custom actions to Thunar to change wallpaper from Thunar using this BWP uh, tool. So here you can see I'm using this. Uh, it's a custom action here. Doink. And so on. You can also add some i3 lock specific things. We we'll get back to this soon. Um, and also, uh, yeah, key bindings. So you can see in the bottom right corner a notification that displays the last pressed key binding I have here. So here I go back and forward in the wallpaper history. And if you have watched the uh, uh, wallpaper series here, you might actually notice one thing here. When I change wallpaper to next here, you can see that it's only BWP next. The wallpaper argument is not needed. That's the default argument now to BWP. So if we just do bwp-n, that will take the next wallpaper or blur, for instance, it will blur the current wallpaper or toggle the blur. You don't need the W option or wallpaper option because both long options and, and short options are supported. So that's one difference from, from what we was working on in, in the previous videos. Um, you can see the full source here. It, it is actually not that different from what we did in the videos. Uh, another thing is that uh, uh, that I should mention is that the default value for BWP did I changed that to uh, this uh, location instead. Home directory cache wallpapers which is the, the directory I have open here. So, so it's a bit different uh, the, the location there. But you can just change that if you don't like that location for, for this walls did just change this environment variable. Uh, also added two more uh, environment variables here. We get back to that. Um, but yeah, it's available on GitHub. And also if you are using an ARC uh, based distro, you can get it from AUR. Uh, just uh, yeah, install BWP from AUR. Kind of cool that the three letter program was available, but it was. Mm. Yeah, and all documentation here is here on GitHub. There's also a man page for, for the script. Uh, but what the thing that have been taking the most time for me here is, is setting up the lock screen uh, stuff here. Because I, I don't know if you remember the first video when I demoed my, my first version of, of this uh, uh, program. I had like a, a very a, a special lock screen and I could also start uh, X screensaver and unlock with i3 lock using BWP to select the wall. I know it's a lot of, of pieces there trying to, uh, fitting together. And and I had all that baked into my old version of BWP which was called i3 locks. Um, with the, the X screensaver commands and stuff baked into the code. But I, I really didn't want that in, in this uh, version here that I made public. But I still wanted uh, people and myself. Uh, I have, have actually not did it myself yet, but, but it is possible now to use BWP and i 3 lock and X screensaver or whatever you want. Because you can now customize uh, the, the look lock screen and the lock screen um, yeah let's just lock the screen this is my lock screen now how it looks like and you can see uh, the clock there in the bottom left corner with a rectangle 
You can also see it's kind of hard to see it on this uh, image that it's a padlock image uh, to the left of the clock there. And when I type stuff here, you can see the indicator, verify, not valid, correct password, unlocks. Uh, and that's a very uh, non-default uh, uh, lock screen. It's actually uh, inspired by this uh, script here, Better Lock Screen by Pavan Jadav, um, which is uh, what actually got me started in the first place. My, my absolutely first version of this was just a modification of, of this script because it, it works very similar in a way. It stores like a blurred and a lock version of, of the image, but it only... The drawback with this script is that it only uh, can have one image in the cache for each time. Every time you change wallpaper, it also generates a blurred version, a lock screen version, and so on. It, it was very slow to change different images, but it was very fast to change between the different states of the images. For example, the lock screen, the blurred version, the dimmed version, and so on. Uh, and I, I thought that was cool, but I didn't like uh, the fact that I needed to uh, export or generate uh, the different types. I, I, I would like yeah, what I have now, you know, with all the blurs already generated. I never need to generate any images. I can very fast now change image here and blur, blur them and stuff because all the work is already done. So my first version was actually a, a, a modification of this script and it, I, I owe a lot of... Um, yeah, I've, I've been very inspired by, by how this looked. But uh, right now BWP is a, is a different thing. Um, so let's get back to that lock screen thing there. So we can... There is now um, two new command line options here. Lock options and image options. And lock options is used to add additional um, options to the i3 lock screen. And image options is used to, to add additional options to uh, um, image magic, which is used before uh, because every every uh, image is piped through image magic before locking the screen. Uh, this is made because uh, the default vanilla version of i3 lock uh, only supports ping images, uh, but but you can kind of yeah. Uh, do a thing uh, that makes it possible to lock the screen with the JPEG images also if you pipe it uh, with through through uh, uh, image magic and if I reset this option here you can see capital I is the short version here for the image option so if we set this to nothing here I think I need a space in it right now uh, and then lock the screen now we can see the image options uh, are, are gone and, and the padlock and, and the black rectangle is not part of the image anymore. But the indicator and everything, uh, the clock and the indicator, that's part of i3 lock uh, options. i3 lock color to be more specific. And if I would reset those as well, as you can see, those are um, capital L for uh, lock options. And now this is the default uh, uh, i3 lock uh, lock screen with just uh, the image uh, applied. You can also set the W option to, to lock it with the same image as the wallpaper. And notice here also that I don't have any lock screens. They are automatically generated when I when I uh, lock the screen here. So if we if we go back to the default. Or I will show you here now because now if I do this now it will have no i3 lock options but it will have the old image option options. Now we can see the black rectangle is back on the wallpaper, and you can also see how fast this was generating this. I don't need need the need to store the locked versions of the images. Uh, and how this works is that uh, uh, this lock options and image options, uh, they, they can both be specified on the command line with, with this L and I, capital L and I, or the long versions, lock options, image options. You can send extra options, but you can also um, store the options in a, a environment variables called BWP lock options, BWP lock image options. Uh, if 
if uh, these options are the path to a file, which they are in my case here, I think we can do echo uh, BWP lock options. There you can see that only contains uh, the path to a file and that file in turn uh, have have a bunch of lock options and those are the ones that will be applied to i3lock. So if we do a cat on this here now, just to see how it looks like, I, I think it's very messy, yeah. Because I, 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 I did it like this because it's often, or often but but you can end up with a lot of options like this and it gets really messy to have that on, on the command line and even in in the file where you source these environment variables wherever that or if it is in your bash or c or whatever wherever it is but you don't want these lines there and and i think the image option variable is even messier uh, let's see i think that's called em img options here yeah, you can see this stuff here. But by storing this uh, in a file, you don't need to calculate whatever the, the variables and the screen size stuff here and position and everything every time you lock the screen. That is already, this is hard coded, you know, and then it just apply, adds those options to the image before it uh, generates it. Uh, and um, yeah, let's take a quick look at that have it here. This is a script that generates these two files that I use uh, to add extra options there to, to my uh, lock screen. Uh, and th uh, yeah, this is one of the things that have been taking a lot of time. I was really uh, diving into the rabbit hole that is image magic and, and stuff like that. And here you can see a weird function I created that calculates the, the string width of uh, uh, the, some text. For example, uh, the clock here, if I lock the screen again, you can see the clock and the, and the rectangle, and the rectangle uh, and the position of the clock and everything, it all depends on how uh, large the font is. So if I change the font here, for example, of the clock to 100 and then um, regenerate, I, I need to do that now, now when I've changed values here. So if I execute the script rectangle.sh that will, you can see that that took some time, 345 milliseconds. But now we have uh, changed some, some values here in, in this, uh, these files that we use for lock options. And now we can see it's a bigger clock, it's also a bigger padlock image in the bottom left corner, and the rectangle is also bigger, and the i3 lock indicator is also larger and, and have changed position. And you can change position with this script as well, or I can do that uh, because uh, this, this script is not yet public. I don't know if I ever will make it public. We, we see. Let's just uh, set X and Y position to 100 and 150 and see how that looks. Whoops, wrong key. Uh, there, and then lock the screen. And now we can see that the clock appears there. Whatever. Um, all in all, it just makes locking very fast and most importantly, or another good benefit is that we don't need to store lock images because this was one of the big drawbacks of my old method uh, uh, i3 locks here. Here we can see uh, yeah, right now it only have one single image in this lock, uh, lock screen directory here. But if we look at that, you can see then it have, a, have like a, a hard uh, generated image with, with um, with this black rectangle where I uh, display the clock with i3 locks uh, already there, you know. But the problem is, every if I wanted to change the location or change the font or anything like, like I do here, then I needed it to generate all the lock screens again. And right now it's just one image, but if you have uh, uh, like hundreds or maybe a thousand wallpapers, that, that takes a lot of time. And that's that's kind of the last thing I would like to show you here. The difference uh, in size and time using this method and my old method. Let's delete that as well here. So let's delete all wallpapers uh, and everything here. And then add them again. Um, and here's a, another small difference with, with the script in, in the videos and, and the uh, public version. If you want to add a directory to, to um, 
with BWP. You just need BWP and then the path to a directory because add the action add is the only uh, option or action that takes a directory as an argument. So so uh, I made it so so you can even skip the action completely and just do this. And this will add the directory uh, OK WP here to to BWP. And it's 15 images in this directory. So it will take some time here, uh, but it's actually quite fast now. And I also added an, another small thing here, is that I uh, experimented a bit with um, Ping Quant. Uh, I found it when I was making the animated GIFs you could see in the examples there. Because Ping Quant is a program that converts 32-bit uh, pings into 8-bit pings without losing almost any quality at all. And I use that on the blurred uh, versions of the images because who cares if the blurred version is uh, looks a bit weird, you know? Um, okay, 26, 26 seconds it took to, to generate or add all these images uh, with, with BWP. Then we can see how long it takes with uh, i3 locks here. And I use this command here to, to make it more fair and using parallel here as well so it will at least add them in parallel. If this would be done with Xargs it would take uh, a lot longer but but it's almost yeah you can see here it's the same same set of images here 15 images but it will take almost twice as long time. Uh, but while it do so let's look at uh, ping quant here which is a great uh, uh, tool that I really recommend if you're working with uh, especially web stuff you know then you want uh, everything to be as small as possible and you can convert two images and it also uh, retains the, the transparency and stuff um, and the same same developer have also made this uh, gifsky uh, application that, that you can create um, uh, there's no link for that here that you can use to create animated GIFs and I think I will make a separate video about that how to make those uh, GIFs that I uh, that I have here in, in uh, the examples because yeah GIF is is kind of a it, it's a weird format you know and, and these GIFs are kind of high quality with the, these images and stuff but they are still relatively small I think this one is maybe seven megabytes or something which is actually very very large but that's uh, I need to use GIFs because that's what uh, what uh, github here supports but it would be much better if we could use webms and stuff but whatever maybe sometime in the future but here you can see 50 seconds uh, longer uh, time to generate this uh, old version of i3 locks here uh, but maybe the most impressive impressive thing is that uh, if we look at the disk size uh, that, that they occupy TMP uh, WP this is the i3 locks um, directory here you can see 76 6 megabytes for 15 wallpapers all, all in all here if we do the same with uh, uh, the BWP version 12 megabytes, same set of images, so, uh, and this is just 15 images. Just imagine the, the difference when you, when you get into the um, several several hundred uh, wallpapers, and I I have about 200 myself, so so it's like uh, it already uh, gets in the in the gigabyte range, you know. And here we can see only 2.1 megabyte for the blurs, and that's because I compressed them with this PNG quant uh, uh, version. And it's like, yeah, th this is an 8-bit ping, uh, but who cares, you know, because it's blurred. So even if it would uh, decrease the quality a bit, it doesn't matter at all when it's a blurred version of the image. Okay, so yeah, I just wanted to make this video now and show you that this is complete. And, and I think, and I'm very happy that it finally is because I was getting so tired working on this uh, BWP thing. But I really wanted to finish it. I had all this, what I have here uh, in my mind already when I started making the series. This is where I wanted to take it, you know. And I'm sorry I haven't been uploading videos, but I've, it takes time writing this documentation and it's sometimes so boring that I just 
I really, really need to play uh, uh, Minecraft and Magic Arena and Tetris on my NES. And maybe I have done that a little bit too much the last couple of weeks here. But you know, sometimes you do what you gotta do. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, let's end this video here, um, um, but I will soon start uploading a lot more videos and uh, I have plans for something quite different uh, to what we usually do on the Labs channel, but it will be like coding things, but hint, it's not uh, bash this time, we will go do something else. Maybe you will like it, maybe you will hate it, I don't know. But if you like this video, like and subscribe. If you're interested in BWP, just try it out. It's, it's just a simple bash script. You, you, you don't need to install anything really. You can just uh, copy this file BWP and put it in uh, and uh, try that. The whole script is contained in, inside this uh, script here. So if you just want to try it out, but otherwise I recommend using the make file or installing it from AUR. If you are a hacker then you can go into the dev branch where you have the source the, the real source so to speak with the lib directory just as we had in the videos and stuff but whatever this is a topic for a different video how i do this how i compile uh, the lib directory into a single script and the documentation and everything but whatever thank you for watching have a great day